Hey guys, this is me, Arthur, and you are watching How to Draw Creepy Creatures. Now, uh, last episode we did a vampire, which is cool. But for another Halloween creature, I got a suggestion from Black Blood in My Eyes to do Jack the Ripper. But he wanted it to kind of have like a demonic or creature elements in there. So I kind of thought about this, like how to make this work. So I decided to combine two Victorian legends, Jack the Ripper and spring -Heel Jack. Now, most of you probably know who Jack the Ripper is because he's the world's most infamous serial killer, but spring -Heel Jack is a more bizarre character. He came a few years before Jack the Ripper, and he was a criminal that attacked women. Didn't kill them, just sort of like slashed them with his fingers. He had claws for fingers. What was really weird is that multiple police officers attested to seeing this criminal who was described as having features ranging from kangaroo legs to glowing eyes, being able to spit fire, horns, sometimes wings. He was called spring -Heel Jack for his ability to clear buildings just by jumping over them. So I always thought it'd be cool to combine those two characters. All right, so let's go and get into it. All right. Since he's supposed to be very nimble, like an acrobat, I'm going to have him jumping. I'm going to start with the basic shape of the head. Hmm. Yeah. spring -Heel Jack is one of the more unusual of Victorian legends. Some believe that he, some psychologists believe that he is the uh, personification of uh, the Industrial Le Revolution and consumerism because of the fact that he uh, appears as a dapper gent, like a businessman, but also has somewhat more mechanical features, almost like an automaton. So some have wondered if this was this legend was a reaction to that. I find that theory a little bit difficult to believe, though, considering the fact that eyewitnesses actually saw him, and there were women. I feel like it's unco it's uh, he can't have been completely imaginary, since so many women came forward having been attacked, police officers chased after him, and everything. I think that Spring Hill Jack was a real person. I just feel like. Uh, maybe his features were a little bit exaggerated and his feats were a little bit exaggerated. Okay. Alright. Also, I feel like he should have, like, a great coat, almost. Okay. We're not going to draw the clothes now, but we're just going to draw the outline of them. I imagine just this kind of chaotic, dapper gent, kind of like Freddy Krueger on a night out of the town. <laughs> okay. I'm going to draw him with a top hat, except I'm going to have to crook it. Okay. Okay. I'm going to have him wearing these gentleman's gloves, kind of. You know, like you would see a typical Victorian man wearing. Except I'm going to have these razor blade, like, claws poking out of the gloves. Yeah, so many women were terrified walking home at night when the uh, spring Hill Jack case was going on. It was very much like a precursor to Jack the Ripper. That uh, You had particularly uh, women working in the more seedy areas of town. They were traveling in groups for their own safety, that sort of thing. Yeah, it was very, 
it was very interesting. It was kind of like, uh, in fact, I wouldn't swear to it, but I believe one or two of the Spring Hill Jack cases occurred in Whitechapel, which is famous for being associated with Jack the Ripper. There have been some attempts to connect the two, suggesting that they might have been the same person, but so far there hasn't been any concrete evidence, especially because of the more supernatural aspects of Spring Hill Jack, the kind of stuff that people saw, like him being able to breathe fire and all that sort of thing and fly, and the fact that Jack the Ripper didn't exhibit any of these traits necessarily. I do think the theory that they were one and the same is kind of interesting, though. All right. All right. What are we going to do with the pants? I'm thinking maybe he should be wearing spats. Kind of just like cool, old-fashioned gentleman spats. Okay, in fact, let me show you guys what we got so far so you can kind of see. Okay. kind of cool is that because he had this dapper Victorian gent who's also a kind of a monster, it kind of brings this uh, Jekyll and Hyde feel to it that's very cool. Like he's two things at once. Okay. Draw the scene in his pant leg. I'm going to work on his face a little bit. I imagine like psychotic smile. Draw a very basic outline for the face, and then add a little bit more detail. Many spring -heeled Jack witnesses claimed that he had a, almost like a Cheshire Cat grin. I like that, so that's what we're going to go for. the eyes very wide because wide eyes tend to tend to kind of uh, imply psychosis almost and I imagine this is a very chaotic character kind of these devilish eyebrows Okay, see, that's what we can do with the face. We could go in a lot of different directions with the face, but that's just how I imagine it. Now, some people have said that they saw horns. That's a little bit subjective because not everybody saw them, but I'm going to add just a little tiny horn, like maybe he has them, 
but they're tucked under his hat most of the time. Also, I'm going to give him very wildly over-groomed hair. Now remember that in Victorian times, um, top hats were often made out of either satin, felt, or sometimes beaver pelt, which tends to be very, very shiny, especially if it's satin or beaver pelt. So remember to draw a lot of reflection on the hat, like the light is shining off of it very strongly. See? Kind of like that. Okay. I'm going to make his shoes just a little bit pointier. Because you see how I kind of gave him rounded toes? That doesn't look quite right, so... I imagine his outfit in general style as borderline effeminate. Kind of like uh, David Bowie in The Labyrinth. It's a little bit unsettling. Okay. Let's work on his other arm a little bit. All right. Draw kind of like the seams in his glove. You know how old-fashioned gloves have um, those three stitches there, so draw that. All right, let's add his claws bursting out of the fingers. The fingers of the glove. shadows around the eyes.
fact, some uh, social psychologists and anthropologists have actually looked at um, our fascination with spring heel Jack and Jack the Ripper, especially back then, as kind of like a the way of exposing the steedier underbelly of Victorian society, kind of like we tend to uh, imagine it as this age of innocence. And that was an image that was kept up even back then. However, people kind of knew that there was also this seedy underbelly, especially with the aristocracy and the upper class, that there was a lot of unsavory things going on. And so the image of this dapper gent who takes perverse delight in attacking people and that sort of thing and prowling the streets at night was kind of a way of acknowledging that other side to Victorian society, that less pleasant side, which I just think is really, it's interesting how society exercises their demons in that way. All right, let's have him wearing a cravat. Now with a tuxedo jacket, an old-fashioned one, it doesn't actually button, it just stays open. So that's what we're going to do. Also, let's give it tails. Just sort of draw like the vague outline of the tails. Okay, draw a couple uh, fake decorative buttons. It's very common on tuxedos like that. Also, he'd be wearing a vest or a waistcoat, so let's add that. Alright, maybe add a chain from where he'd be have he'd have a pocket watch tucked in his vest. Alright, that's what we got so far. You guys gonna have nightmares yet? <laughs> okay. Now... Now usually with a monster like this I give him sort of tattered gar garments, but I kind of imagine since he's supposed to look like uh, a member of the elite upper classes, he would probably have all the best clothes and they would all be in very good condition. You could draw him with like a tattered shawl or a hood or something like that and that'd be perfectly cool. Just that's the way I imagine him. That he's probably very prideful about his appearance. He wants to wear all the best things. Add some points to the tails, the tail coat, I should say. That's what we got so far. Now let's add a little bit of shading, kind of define this a little bit.
Okay. kind of draw the shadow of his claw on him. Now if his shoes are brightly polished leather, they will probably have the same shining effect as his hat. So let's draw that. Kind of like that. You see his shoes? Okay. We've lost quite a bit of detail with the shading, so let's fill that in as best we can. Okay, there we go. Try to make sure you guys can see better. Yeah, anywhere where there's been like heavy shading, you might want to go over that area again because you'll have lost a lot of your detail. 
Okay. All right, sign off with your artist mark. And you have just drawn what I like to call spring -Heel Jack the Ripper. All right, like, share, and subscribe. And I absolutely love getting suggestions, so you can leave your uh, recommendations in the comments of any creature that you want me to draw, as long as it's not too freaky. Um, Right now I'm trying to focus on Halloween creatures or basically anything, uh, any kind of horror cr or fantasy creature that gets you in the Halloween spirit, so that would be great. Also, anybody who uh, finished a lesson on this show and would like to show off your artwork, you can send it to ArthurWroteThis at gmail.com, and as long as you include your written permission in the email, I will show it off on the show with your name so that everybody knows that you did it. Alright, thanks so much for watching you guys. Happy pre-Halloween and goodbye.